Hey, good morning, 7th grade. <clears throat> this is Friday, March the 27th. This is your language lesson for today. We will <clears throat> look over a few things on lesson 6 that were due today. And we will talk about lesson 7, which is due on Monday. So open your books to page 19. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now let's just look a little bit at the odds here. We're looking at simple and compound sentences. A simple sentence is one independent clause. One clause has a subject verb and it makes sense. It stands by itself. A compound sentence then is two or more independent clauses. And the clauses are connected with a comma and a conjunction, or with just a semicolon, okay? So two, two independent clauses, two sentences, if you will, connected uh, by a conjunction or the semicolon as one sentence. So you will have one, one independent clause with its subject and verb, and then uh, another, another independent clause after that. Let's just look down over these. Look at their subjects and verbs and see if they are simple or compound. Number one, a cold winter wind inspired the invention of earmuffs. So look at the subject, find the subject, the verb, and decide whether or not it's simple or compound. So what's doing the action? What's this sentence about? Wind. Should be underlined once. What did the wind do? It inspired the invention of earmuffs. There is no more, there are no more verbs or subjects. That is a simple S, simple sentence. Number three, many inventions were made because of a need, but some came from a curious mind. So you have inventions were made, inventions the subject, were made the verb, and then always keep your eyes open for the comma and the conjunction. They were made because of a need, comma, but some, that's the, your next subject, came as the verb from a curious mind. And that one will be compound. Don't get confused with conjunctions that are just connecting compound verbs or compound subjects. Don't just assume because there's a conjunction that it's a compound sentence. If there's a, if there's a conjunction, there must be a subject and a verb after the conjunction to make it a compound sentence. So number five, silly putty, imprints, stretches, and bounces. Okay, that is simply a compound verb uh, within a simple sentence. So silly putty is the subject, imprint, stretches, bounces, verbs. Number seven, a big long, sentence. Ah, I was going to say, that's quite a bit there, and I see I wrote simple, it is not simple. The idea for Cracker Jacks had been around for a long time, semicolon. New England Indian tribes preserved popcorn by coating it with maple syrup. Right? Cracker Jacks is, I don't know if you know what Cracker Jacks are, it's like a caramel popcorn. It was popular back when I was a kid. So you have a set, you have an independent clause. The idea subject for Cracker Jacks has been verb around for a long time, semicolon. And then you have another independent clause. New England Indian tribes is a subject, tri just tribes is a subject, preserved is the verb. And that is a compound. You see the connection there with the semicolon between time and New England. I would like you to grade this diagram on number 11 
On this assignment, we are going to grade <clears throat> number 11 and then the spelling words, okay? So if you have not yet done, if you're not yet done when you look at this video, stop the video and figure out your diagram and the spelling word. I want the number wrong for the diagram number 11 and the spelling, I want that put somewhere on your uh, language quiz that you were supposed to do yesterday. So maybe in the place where there's that blank where you have a, uh, for the spelling score, just put the number wrong from this diagram and the spelling in there and that will probably go on your report card. All right, let's look at the diagram. Number 11. I have the diagram up here. Spencer Silver developed an adhesive and Arthur Fry found a use for it, found a use for it. So what do we have here? That indicates what? A compound sentence. Okay? So do your best to grade this accurately, right? Just anything that's not where it's supposed to be. Uh, if you have use as an adverb or an adjective somewhere or an adhesive, okay, these are direct objects. So anything that's not at the, at the right place. Spencer Silver is the name of a person, Arthur Fry. So they are the subjects. Spencer Silver developed an adhesive. Always remember A and the are adjectives. The conjunction for the two independent clauses, the compound sentence, connects from verb to verb, always from verb to verb. Okay? So get that right. Arthur Fry found use, A use for it. So check that out. There's that diagram. Grade the diagram. Count the number wrong. And we will also grade the spelling of this, and then I want the total number wrong for the diagram and the spelling placed on your spot where you would put your spelling score. If, if your diagram is completely messed up and you don't know what to do with it, uh, if you want to take a picture of it and send it to me, but please don't everybody do that, okay? You can figure this out. If a word is not at the right place, it's wrong. Figure it out. Send me a picture if you absolutely can't figure it out. All right. <clears throat> now let's look at the spelling words. Don't forget about uh, number 17. Don't forget about gerunds when you're diagramming sentences. There you had an interesting, just look at 17 quickly. You don't have to count the, I mean, yeah, you don't have to keep track of this number wrong. Just number 11, I need the number wrong. 17, you have a gerund phrase, staying healthy would be the subject. Healthy in this case is a predicate adjective. It's kind of weird, okay? It's hard to figure out on its own. We haven't had, I don't think we've had gerunds with predicate adjectives. So I stay healthy. I am healthy. I stay healthy. So stay there would be a linking verb, healthy being the predicate adjective. <coughs> Staying healthy requires as your verb. And then you have a direct object, Jaron phrase, eating wisely. And I was just thinking about that wisely. Wisely is actually a what? Wisely is actually an adverb. That's so you have this funny thing with gerunds because gerunds are nouns, so they're anywhere that nouns can be. But because they are also verb forms, they have these direct objects and these predicate adjectives after them. And so a word modifying. This gerund is going to be a adverb, actually, not an adjective, even though it's a noun. So you have that kind of that strange relationship with these nouns that have direct objects, which you know follow act action verbs, and wisely would be an adverb, how they're eating. They're eating wisely. So that's kind of an interesting thing there. But wisely is diagram, I mean, it's diagram the same way, whether it's a adjective or an adverb, so you don't get in trouble there if you don't know exactly what it is. 
All right, let's look at the spelling quickly, and then look at just a little bit at lesson seven. Number 31. Sewing together the edges of the cut or a wound or the thread used. So this can be a verb or a noun. To suture, you're sewing the, the stitching the wound together, that's to suture. And also the, the actual, uh, you say I got 10 stitches, you got 10 sutures. Uh, the material, the thread, the stitches, the thread is actually called suture too. Number 32 is a thermometer. 33, infection. 34, your body builds up a natural immunity to diseases. So number 34 is immune. 35, vaccination. When you get vaccinated for certain diseases, that's one of the things with this coronavirus, there is no vaccine out yet. These are the kinds of epidemics that you would get if there were no vaccines in the world, all right? We don't know uh, what things like polio, measles, smallpox, all of those uh, diseases are basically gone, but only because there's vaccination. Our bodies have also built up natural immunity to them, but and that's because of vaccines. Uh, but if there were no vaccines, people would still be dying of all of, those, all of those other diseases. So that's one of the things to remember there. 36 is a physician. <clears throat> 37, sanitary. 38, contagious, easily spread from one to another. 39, bacteria. 40, appointment. 41, surgery. 42, ambulance. 43, virus, 44, nausea, 45, allergy, 46, hygiene, 47, stethoscope, 48, surgeon, 49, antibiotic, and 50, physical. So, your number wrong from number 11, the diagram, and the spelling words with the number wrong in the blank where you would put your spelling score on your quiz, please. Number, just the number wrong. Don't worry about percent. I'll put a percent there when I give it back. Complex sentences, you should still be familiar with. A complex sentence is an independent clause and one or more dependent clauses. Dependent clauses, remember, are always introduced by either relative pronouns. Relative pronouns introduce adjective clauses and subordinating conjunctions introduce adverb clauses. So a clause has a subject and a verb. A dependent clause is added to a sentence to just give details, to make it more interesting. Just give added details in one sentence. Kind of like compound sentences, you're, you're combining independent clauses into one sentence. Uh, your dependent clauses allow you to uh, put more information in one sentence. So the first part, Put brackets around your dependent clause. The dependent clause is your relative pronoun, your subordinate conjunction, first word. That's your dependent clause. So number two, just for example, what is your dependent clause in number two? So you have the man who developed aspirin thought that it was worthless. So you have that relative pronoun who, so put brackets around who developed aspirin and the man thought that it was worthless would be underlined. And then in four through eight, you are supposed to recognize whether they are compound or complex sentences. You're supposed to, it says go back, so underline the verbs twice, the subjects once, and then 
label it as compound or complex. This is a compound sentence, okay? Your conjunction connecting two independent clauses, two clauses that would stand alone as sentences. Your complex sentence is an independent clause <coughs> with one or more dependent clauses within there just to add interest, okay? So check that out. Remember how to diagram complex sentences. If you have a subordinating conjunction, that goes on the dotted line. Your relative pronoun is often the subject of a adjective dependent, uh, yes, an adjective clause. So if you have a relative pronoun, it's often that the, late, uh, the subject on the bottom part of your diagram. All right, have lesson seven done for Monday, and I think I will let you go.